Okay, so initially I was thinking we won't have time to do this, but because we have one more class on Friday, I just thought I'll give you a crash course on power amplifiers. Okay, so obviously you know these are all probably single or two transistor circuits as a power amplifier, and uh, usually people take a year or two to design them. Okay, so don't take it too lightly. Um, sometimes more. Okay, and it's very sensitive to a number of parameters. Okay, so what we are going to present today is a very very basic theory. Okay, and uh, we are going to cover. We I will we'll try to cover at least maybe like five or six types of power amplifiers. Okay, so I will just go through them quickly. Okay, so I mean normally I'd want to spend maybe two or three classes at least on this, but since we don't have time, I just decided give a quick introduction. So of course the uh, you can have uh, narrow band or wide band. So first classification is that is the basic classification. But the more important one is linear or switching power amplifiers. Okay. So, linear PAs will be used in cases where you have amplitude modulation, okay. Whereas, switching PAs will be used in, um, let's say, PM or FM type of situations, okay. So, the switching PAs are typically constant envelope, okay. So, the output envelope, the output amplitude does not change sig uh, significantly with input amplitude. Whereas in linear PAs, you get some specific gain, almost like an amplitude, uh, like a voltage gain. Okay. So what kind of trade-off do you have in the design? So rather, what are the parameters you are interested in? Okay. So of course, it's a power amplifier. So you're interested in power gain. You're interested in linearity, the output power, and the efficiency of the power amplifier. Okay. So you will see this actually has two classifications, we will look at both, there are two types of efficiencies. So if you look at the classical PAs, so they are the linear types of PAs. So class A, class, you know, you would have studied a lot of these things in your analog electronics course, I am sure, right, class A amplifiers, class AB and class B. I'm sure you have studied those, right? Okay, so you classify them based on the conduction angle. So for the amount of time of the uh, during the cycle when the transistor is actually on, it is conducting. Okay. So the class A has a 360 degree conduction angle. Okay. So first of all, all of these classical PAs will have a a standard type of topology. Okay. Okay, this is a standard topology for all of these class A, A, B, B, C. Okay, yes. Okay, so the conduction angle, so your your uh, so let's say it's running at a particular frequency. Okay, so it'll have a certain time period. 
out of the time period the transistor itself can be on for the full time period or can be on only for part of the time period okay so you can classify it based on the amount of time the transistor stays on okay even though the transistor does not stay on what you will see is the resonant circuit makes sure that the output voltage is still sinusoidal even though the output uh, the current through the transistor is not or the voltage across the transistor may not be okay so finally i mean so that is one big difference here uh, in in rf power amplifiers because you can actually use resonant circuits to tune out the unwanted harmonics okay and at the end of the day the conduction angle actually depends on the biasing of the transistor itself okay so this is the kind of a standard uh, topology which you are going to use for all all of these classical pas okay so you have a very large inductor you have a very large capacitor so the large inductor makes sure that it has so it will make sure that there's a constant current flowing through it okay it lacks like a current source and the other advantage is it actually biases your output at vdd the capacitor the bfc the big fat capacitor makes sure that there is no dc current flowing through your load okay this lc resonance circuit make sure that you don't have if there are any remember that at resonance it's a high impedance so the current i of omega not flows through the load all other currents are bypassed that is what you want to achieve okay so at the end of the day you want to get a sinusoidal current at the output okay so this rl can of course be for example 50 ohm of the antenna or it, you can do some impedance matching and change it it's up to you depending on what power you want to deliver okay so now if you can actually plot so the drain voltages and the drain uh, sorry the vds of the transistor drain source voltage of the transistor and the drain current okay and you'll see what it looks like for different uh, uh, types of pas it will be slightly different so let's plot vds and id as a function of time okay so it's bias around vdd okay and for many of these cases you can assume that vd sat is very small compared to vdd that's what we'll do okay it makes our calculations easier and you have some dc current and okay you will have some current and obviously you make sure that the for class a you make sure that id is always greater than 0 so the transistor is always on okay so the maximum voltage at the top is 2 vdd minus vd sat and at the bottom is vd sat quite often you'll see people approximately 2 vdd okay so that the overall amplitude is approximately vdd okay sorry <clears throat> so what happens when you have very large current yeah you are right so the current and voltage will definitely be out of phase okay they will be out of phase you are right okay and of course the ideal case you want is so you want the current to just cut off okay at the minimum 
and you can find the conditions for that okay so you can bias it such that the current just cuts off and you get maximum amplitude so approximately vdd you can say id okay or minus ir of ir sin omega naught t the sign doesn't matter that much okay okay so the output is nothing but the dc minus the drain current <laughs> okay so let's uh, let me stick to our convention okay so now v out is rl which is sin omega naught t and your vds is okay um okay you can find expressions for vds you'll see you'll find you'll see why we are trying to find this out okay what is your p out i mean you can do either i out times v out or v out squared over 2 rl v out squared over uh, you know rl whatever you want where they are all rms quantities of course the power is going to have a second harmonic component and a dc component right so you can plot your power so it's going to be at a it's going to have something like this a sin square kind of behavior okay so now to calculate efficiency we're going to calculate the dc power okay from the power supply what is this it's vdd times idc okay if you assume that m1 just cuts off so you want to get the best efficiency right so the best efficiency is when m1 just cuts off and at that point your idc is the same as irf the amplitude okay which means you can write it as vdd times irf so your drain it's this is called drain efficiency okay it's nothing but p out over pdc okay and what is the maximum swing we have at the output it's nothing but irf times rl which is nothing but vdd so you want maximum vdd swing so efficiency is 50% this is the maximum efficiency because you have biased it optimally such that you use the whole dynamic range of the current and the voltage okay now you are also going to define something called
the normalized power output capability okay so we'll call it as pn so this is defined as the ratio of the maximum power you are delivering to the load over the product of the peak values of the of vds and id so your so this basically gives you an idea if you are if you are delivering a certain amount of power how much stress are you placing on the device okay because the more the voltage swing at the drain of the transistor the more voltage stress you have if you are delivering a lot of current through running a lot of current through the transistor it will cause a lot of current stress okay <laughs> so in this case po max is nothing but so output swing is vdd so your po max is vdd square over 2 rl what is vds max is nothing but 2 vdd okay times what is io id max is nothing but 2 vdd over rl this happens to be 1 by 8 okay so this is somewhat high okay the uh, so you want if you if this number is very large then it means you are actually placing less for a given amount of power you are actually placing less stress right if this number is very small that means that the vds max and id id max are very high compared to the related to the power you are trying to deliver okay this is 1 by 8 now similarly you have a class b amplifier conduction angle is 180 degrees okay in other words so let's say if we again plot vds and id as a function of time the output is still biased at vdd okay okay but the difference is it is going to conduct for only half the cycle it's going to look the current through the transistor is going to look something like this okay again so you know based on this waveform you can you know find out the fundamental value of the current and find out what goes through the load so that is what will go through the load okay okay so in this case it will be the way i have drawn it, it will be t by 2 to t okay at times okay this is the fundamental portion of the current this happens to be irf over 2 this is irf okay so again you can calculate your efficiency and your pn normalized output power capability i am rushing through this because i assume class a class ab you guys have already seen before so we need to get to the real uh, so these are these are of i would say of somewhat limited value in many modern um, systems they do have some value but the more uh, the other types of the switching power amplifiers are more often used because they have they can have higher efficiencies okay so you can show that the maximum efficiency is pi by 4 okay you can again calculate pdc and po okay you can show that this happens to be pi by 
अप्रोक्सीमेटली सेवेंटी एट परसेंट एंड सिमिलरली यू कैन शो दैट पी एन इज पी एन इज एक्चुअली द सेम एज द क्लास ए केस okay i'll it's that in the notes so you guys can take a look at it i want to kind of rush through and get to the uh, the other section so what does this mean for the uh, for the way you bias the transistor at the input so obviously it's all to do with biasing right you want to have a certain amount of current so which means Okay, so uh, we do one thing. Okay, so you're going to add some B bias here. So this is this is the biasing capacitance. You have some biasing resistance. Okay, so let's say V S is. Your input is some sinusoid. Okay. So for class A, you want Vb to be greater than Vt plus Vrf. Okay. So that <clears throat> at the lowest end of Vrf, okay, the transistor will still be on. Whereas For class B, the bias voltage will be at Vt. Okay, which means when it's above Vt, the transistor will conduct. When it's below Vt, the trans transistor will not conduct. Okay. Now you can also bias it such that the uh, Vb is actually less than Vt. Okay, which means the The transistor will conduct for less than 180 degrees of the cycle. Okay. In other words, whenever your input goes above Vt, the transistor will conduct. For most of the cycle, it will actually be off. Okay, this is your VDS again. Now, if you look at your current, you're going to have just the top portion of a sinusoid. And this two phi is called the conduction angle. Remember, two phi is the conduction angle, not phi. Okay, this is your ID. Okay, so now for a for an arbitrary conduction angle, you can find expressions for your DC current, for your you know power and so on. Okay, so it happens to be some function of phi. So you can show that phi is. Okay. your so called bias current happens to be the offset current so you earlier we assumed that it is an idc plus ir of sin omega not t so that offset current is actually negative obviously because now you have a 
conduction angle less than 180 degrees. And you can find expressions for your actual average current through your transistor, which will be ID. You can show that this is nothing but IRF over pi times sin phi minus phi cos phi, where phi is the half conduction angle. Okay. And similarly, you can calculate expressions for the fundamental. You can show that the fundamental is IRF over 2 pi times 2 phi minus sin 2 phi. Okay. So okay. So you can go through this. You can look at the notes. The thing to remember is, you can find expressions for the efficiency in terms of phi. Okay. You can find expressions for the output power in terms of phi and phi and so on. So I'll just give you this. So your maximum efficiency. You can assume that there's a swing of VDD at the drain to get your maximum efficiency. And that happens to be. I'll show you what happens. So it looks like. 2 phi minus sin 2 phi over 4 times it looks like this okay so if you try to get maximum efficiency from this you keep tending it so happens that that happens at of you'll get a value of 100% when phi is actually zero so obviously you don't have any output power okay so that's a that's an obvious problem so the trade offs are not very different in this amplifier okay so it is just a natural extension of your class a and class class b so let's look at your switching pas so we look at three types so okay so we look at a class d a class E and a class F. Okay. So for the class D case, we look at a uh, at a push pull kind of case. So so far we have just been seeing a you know single ended power amplifier. So this one we look at a push pull. Okay. So this is going to make sure that, <clears throat> so let's call these M1 and M2, okay. So what's going to happen is when you have a certain drive at the input, for half the cycle M1 is going to conduct, for half the cycle M2 is going to conduct. The difference is between the earlier cases in this case is that the main idea of switching PA is you are going to use your MOSFETs as purely as switches, okay. The main reason you want to do it that way is because for an ideal switch, you know that when your switch is on, what is the voltage across that? Ideally, it's zero. Okay, so you have current, but you have no voltage, so the power dissipation is zero. When the switch is open, you have voltage but no current. Okay, so you want to tend towards such a case. Okay, <clears throat> and you are going to try to use the MOSFETs in such a configuration. Okay, so now you can actually plot the voltages. Okay, so let's take M1. We can plot the voltages at the drain of M1 and the current, and then we will also plot the secondary. Okay, okay. 
okay the voltage of the drain will look something like this again the output is biased at vdd when the switch is on it goes to zero when the switch is off it goes to 2 vdd okay and it's more like a square wave and if you plot id1 you have current here you have current here so whenever the voltage is zero you have current whenever the current is zero you have whenever the uh, yeah whenever the current is zero you have voltage okay that is the ideal case you want and you get a full half sinusoid okay and if you look at the current through the other transistor it will provide the other half cycle that's why it's a push pull amplifier so let us say the voltage in the secondary is vs2 secondary of the second transformer is vs2 and the current is is2 okay so we are going to plot those two so you are going to get a nice square wave with both half both sides okay similarly if you look at is2 sir you are going to get a nice sinusoid on the other side the main reason is <clears throat> so note that one difference is you have a series resonance circuit okay why do we have a parallel resonance circuit so if you look at the linear power amplifiers when the transistor is on because the inductor is cutting off any current it is behaving like a current source like a signal current source okay so you want to bypass the extra harmonics through a shunt shunt um shunt resonance circuit in this case you know that the switch when it's on is actually low impedance okay so that's why you are going to use a series resonance circuit okay and similarly you can find out your uh, you know drain efficiency and so on and let's just find find out what that is okay you can show that your power handling capability is actually we want to look at the class d we'll do that for the class e and class f but for this one you can show that it is 1 over pi okay I should say lower stress. Okay, because the number is slightly higher than the other case. <coughs> okay. So now the only thing you need to have is you are assuming that the switches are pretty fast. Okay, they are turning on and turning off very fast. okay that is an assumption you are implicitly making when you are drawing all these waveforms so in a real case this may not be very applicable to high frequency pas so class d is you know used quite often in for example audio amplifiers but in you know rf power amplifiers they may or may not be that useful what is more useful are the class e and class f architectures so the idea is very similar okay you want to use it as a switch so that's the key idea as always but the difference is you okay the difference is you are going to try to bias it such that the before the current starts to flow the voltage goes to zero okay that's what you want you want to bias it in such a way okay so so that you make sure there is no overlap between the current and voltage waveforms
and to do that you are actually going to use a higher order slightly higher order reactive network ok use your RL Again, you can plot your VDS and ID for these cases. Okay, so you can show that. Let's see. So let us say your VDS waveform goes like this. Okay, it turns off, and your ID actually turns on after this. Okay, so remember that you are going to have the second cycle. And ideally, you want something like this. Okay. The problem is, you have taken, you know, you take very good care of the on cycle, but in such an architecture, what you'll see is, you always see the off cycle. Okay. When the transfer turns off, you will see some power leakage. Okay. Into the transistor. So there is a, actually a classic reference. Okay, it's uh, from 1975. Okay, by uh, SoCal and SoCal. Okay, that's the, that's the name of the authors. It's actually in JSSC 1975. I'll put up the paper on the website. I think it says. Uh, um, a new uh, class E, a new class of uh, uh, high frequency single ended power amplifiers. I think that is the title. Okay. So, it is in Journal of Solid State Circuits in 1975. Okay. And he actually gives you all the design equations you need. Okay. For this. And I will just kind of list out because the main design equations are how do you choose C1, L, and C2, right? Those are the important ones. So, of course, you have a certain Q, your inductance is Q times RL over omega. Okay, this is the expression for C1. Okay, so it's kind of they have derived a certain set of design equations. Okay, and you can show that your P out max is 2 by 1 plus pi square over 4 times V d square over R L. Okay, don't worry too much about these numbers. Okay, so they are just you know specific design equations, but you can always refer to them. So again, you can decide your power output power handling capability. Okay, that happens to be 0.98. Okay, approximately 0.1. Okay. The other case we had uh, even for the class A and class B we had what 1 over 8 which is 0.125. So, this is actually also a high stress okay, amplifier.
and uh, actually one more thing to remember is i forgot to yes so because you are trying to sharply turn on and turn off these devices you are actually your peak voltage and peak current are actually quite high because you have an inductor right and a reactive network so it turns out this is almost 3.6 times vdd okay and this is almost the peak of the current is almost 1.7 vdd over rl so that itself should tell us that it's actually a very high stress okay situation for the amplifier okay so next we'll look at the class f amplifier the idea here is actually slightly different okay so what you are going to try to do is so let's say this you're going to use a transmission line of a certain length okay so you're going to use a lambda by 4 so you know the properties of the lambda by 4 right so what happens so if you have a so let's say what is en z not squared by zl right okay so you're going to use this so what happens if you put a lambda by 4 so okay so typically if you have these kind of reactive network the transistor is switching you are going to get the fundamental plus harmonics of the fundamental okay so what you actually want to filter out are the harmonics okay so it turns out that if you do this okay so first of all this is tuned to omega not okay so at omega not it's it's an open for all other frequencies it's a short okay what is this transformer going to do at even multiples of omega not so let's say 2 omega not 4 omega not and so on this transmission line is going to have effective length of n times lambda over 2 right at short circuits sorry at uh, odd multiples of of omega not you are going to get 2n plus 1 times lambda by 4 okay and that is also going to give you so this okay at 2n plus 1 omega not this re parallel resonance is going to be a short so it's going to create an open here okay so you're going to make sure that only omega not flows through the transformer okay okay and if you plot your again you can plot your vds and your id okay so it's going to go from 2 vd to 
and current is going to look like this you can show that the peak value of the current is 8 vdd over pi rl okay that's actually very easy to do so all you have to do is you know this find the fundamental is just 4 by pi times the amplitude amplitude is vdd right so actually fairly straightforward so now you can find your efficiency So this is your fundamental of the of this guy. This thing is nothing but okay. Eight V D squared over pi square R L. Of course, your ideal efficiency is 100%. Ideally, okay, you're assuming that the harmonics are ideally completely rejected. Okay. So in practice, you can actually get a better efficiency than the class E. Okay, because you're actually using resonance circuits to uh, filter out the higher harmonics. You can show that your P n okay is this is your vds max this is your id max so the normalized power output capability is approximately 0.16 okay little bit better than the linear pas and definitely better than the class E and you can come up with a so of course you don't want to use transmission lines in many of these uh, because they will get too long okay so the next thing to do is use lumped LCs because you know you can start using what you are trying to do is very simple you are trying to reject out certain harmonics start using you know tuned uh, tuned circuits either series or parallel tuned circuits to reject harmonics. So for example, this is tuned to omega naught, the original one. You can tune these to 3 omega naught and 5 omega naught. So that those will be the major components. Okay. So the other one thing you have to remember is your all in all cases your output voltages are all functions of the VDD so they are actually constant envelope PAs okay so they are very good with phase modulation so you can get very so in cases where let us say you have uh, um, GMSK or you know PSK something like that they will perform very well okay now there are obviously extensions to this so if you want to perform amplitude modulation also people tend to use these because they are still very high efficiency but then this is your vdd uh, you can now modulate your vdd so if you change your vdd your output envelope will change with your vdd okay so you can have supply modulators okay you can take from a dc power supply and take your amplitude signal and vary your vdd based on the amplitude and that will directly get transferred onto your output signal okay
So quickly, other design considerations. So we talked about what is called drain efficiency. Okay, but you have a second definition called it's called power added efficiency, and you'll see the from the way it's defined. It's defined as P out minus P in over P D C. The reason you want to define it this way is because if you have a PA, okay, which has, which gives out no power gain, okay, it look as if it has a very high efficiency, but in reality it doesn't because you're not adding any power, okay. So this is a good way. So in which case, if there is no power gain, your power added efficiency is actually zero for the PA. So obviously this is less than the drain efficiency, okay, which is just P out over P D C. So the other thing is stability. So you have parasitic uh, gate to drain capacitors, which will end up degrading your your stability of the PA. And especially now you have very large power gains, your PA is going to be very sensitive, okay, to your CGD. Another very important problem. Breakdown. Okay. Um, switching PAs may or may not have. Okay, but uh, definitely the linear PAs have it. Okay, switching PAs may not have as big a uh, because you are just depending on a switch, right? You are not transferring any input output signal. So switching PAs may not have such a big problem. Breakdown voltages. Okay, so we considered we are looking at cases where your output is swinging. You know. Much higher. If you look at the class E, it's swinging as high as 3.6 times the VDD. So definitely, your circuit is going to be very sensitive to breakdown. Okay. So you're periodically, if you start stressing it to such a high voltage, so what would happen is if you don't design it properly, so you have to look at different kinds of breakdowns. Okay. So the first breakdown is drain bulk and source bulk diodes. Okay. So if you're having such a large swing at the drain. Okay, so typically it will be a function of VDD. So if your VDD is typically like you know, let's say 1.2 volts, your diodes will not have a much larger breakdown than maybe 3 or 3 volts or something. Okay, maybe 2 to 3x of your VDD, not much more. Okay. The other thing is, you have to worry about what is called TDDB. Okay, time dependent breakdown. Okay. Okay, the reason it's called sorry, it's called time dependent dielectric breakdown. Okay, <laughs> so the main reason is you it's called time dependent is because so now you are working with very large powers, you will have these very high energy electrons which can go and create traps inside the oxide and it's actually a cumulative effect. Okay, because what happens is these traps they will eventually slowly reduce your threshold voltage of your device. Okay, So, it is a cumulative effect. So, slowly it will you will reach a point where your efficiency will keep dropping, dropping, dropping till such a point where it will be useless. Gate rupture. So, obviously now your gate, Okay, so gate is, gates are getting thinner and thinner, right? So you have to start worrying about fields in the gate, which can actually break down your oxide, gate oxide. Okay. And the last one is called punch through. So what happens when you have very large VDSS? The depletion region of the drain keeps extending, extending until it actually hits the source. Okay. So if it ha if that happens, you completely lose your channel. Okay. Ideally, your channel extends from the source to a certain region. After that, you have the depletion region. If your voltage fields are high enough, it will get pushed out until it hits the source. Okay. Okay. So those are the breakdown phenomena. 
and the last thing you have to worry about is well not the last thing last thing we are going to consider in class is the so we talked about you know in class the kinds of impedance matching we talked about were all small signal impedance matching okay small signal as parameters okay so in reality when you have signals of such large uh, amplitudes quite often your passive devices will still be linear but your active devices the input impedance is no longer linear okay so in which case you have to worry about large signal impedance matching okay not small signal impedance matching so in in other words if you look at the simulator instead of doing a simple s parameter analysis you will be doing what is called a periodic s parameter analysis okay so you will again be doing the dot steady state analysis followed by your s parameter you need to find out your uh, so for example your input gate gate source capacitance will no longer be two thirds wlc aux okay there will be a lot of uh, other effects going on in that okay okay so we'll uh, we'll stop here for the pas okay and that was a